Lord have mercy. All right, so today we are building these. Long enough? <laughs> Stay tuned. Hi guys, so for those of you that don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs and this is Kat, she's the sewer, she doesn't want to talk on camera. So anyway, yeah, today we did bandsaw boxes. Um, Kat's been wanting to do bandsaw boxes for a very long time and I've actually never done one, um, honestly, because I've never owned a bandsaw until earlier this year, like January, February, somewhere in there is when I bought the first one. And we ran into a few issues, we'll go over those in the video. Um, but yeah, um, we came up with three, three different designs and one of them is actually just for me because Kat insists that every now and then I build something just for myself. So I decided for my first bandsaw box, I would just make one for myself. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to prep the wood to be able to put it together. This is an old piece of walnut that I had that I'm going to incorporate in a couple of the boxes. And you see there's some stress in the board right there, so I had to back it out and make the cut. There are quite a few bandsaw box videos out there, but one that I've one thing I've never seen is I've never seen anyone show where you laminate pieces together. Uh, they've always used a single block or something along those lines. And the ones that have laminated pieces together they haven't shown you all the prep work that goes into it so you got to cut all your pieces down to size and get a good glue joint on the planer and joiner and then you can glue them together now when I say cut down to size I'm not talking an exact dimension or anything like that you just need to make sure that your initial block is large enough for your pattern to fit on so you just get everything cut and trim down to that and then you run them over the joiner and planer to get a good flat edge to laminate it, lamin laminate them together and you're good to go. So here you can see I'm running that piece of walnut over the joiner. It took a good bit of work on this one because it, I'm not sure how old the thing was but it was pretty ugly when I started but in the end it turned out beautiful. It had a beautiful grain pattern in it and was just awesome. And now I'm running some maple pieces, eight quarter maple through the planer just to get the edge smooth and we'll move on. And now comes the fun part. We get to watch Kat laminate her first pieces together and this is all you do. You just spread the glue on, you spread it over and then you put them all together and you clamp them together and you let them sit overnight. Uh, fairly straightforward. I mean, if you've ever laminated boards before, it's the exact same procedure. And again, you don't need to worry about being 100% accurate here because you're going to be cutting your the initial shape of your box out of this. So you you know, if your pieces don't line up exactly even on the ends or anything like that, that's okay because you're going to be cutting all that off. And now it's my turn. Uh, I'm going to wipe everything down with acetone first, and then I'm going to glue it up because I'm using a Paduke and Purple Heart and Mime as well as Cherry and a piece of that Walnut. So long story short, um, we're doing three designs. One is Cat, she's doing all the work on it. The other one is mine, I'm doing all the work on it. And then we have a third one that's actually going to be a gift, a Christmas gift for our great niece and we're both working on that. So same procedure as, four, as before, just Spread on the glue, spread it all over, and then press the boards together and clamp them down and let it sit overnight. And yes, as you can see, I used just the perfect amount of glue. Please excuse the wind, we have a storm moving in at this point and it got rather windy.
And here's all three glued up and in clamps, and it was at this point that I realized we were going to have a problem. So here they all are out of the clamps, and as you can see, they're fairly decent size. We had a 10 inch bandsaw. And for some reason it didn't click on me that I only had a four and a half inch resaw capacity on that 10 inch bandsaw. <clears throat> These things are six inches plus, and so yeah, the bandsaw is not gonna work. So we wound up having to buy a new bandsaw. Luckily for us, Woodcraft was having a sale at the time on Rikon products, and so we were able to get this Rikon 10 325 14 inch bandsaw for a good bit less than normal and it all worked out so here it is all set up I'm just getting the blade set on it and I'm gonna go through and get the guide set and we'll be good to go and here I'm showing Kat how to fold up a bandsaw blade Okay, so now that all the fun is over with, um, it's time to get back to work. And the next step is to put your pattern on your block. So you line everything up and then you spray the paper with adhesive, spray adhesive, and then place it on making sure your lines are inside the block and you're good to go. And now it's time to start cutting. So a lot of people think that bandsaw boxes are complicated they're actually not but one thing that makes them complicated for woodworkers especially fine woodworkers is there's not a lot of room for error after you make this cut this cut it you cut it out and you can sand it down to the side the right shape or whatever but this is pretty much the only cut you can actually make a mistake on and when I say that well, I'll explain that when we go to cut the insides. I think we need to set up some sort of dust collection. Okay, so the next cuts you're going to make is you're going to cut the front and the back off the box. Actually, you're just going to cut the back off of it. So we set it up to about a quarter inch and Kat's just performing a resaw operation to cut the back off. Okay, so once you have the back cut off, then it's time to start cutting out the drawers. 
and this is where it starts to seem complicated to those of us that do fine woodworking is because on these cuts right here you if you make a mistake you can't back out and start over so it's hard for us to wrap our heads around the fact that what you cut is what you cut and so you just have to take your time go slow and get as close to your line as possible but just keep in mind that any mistake that you make is a feature not a mistake so because you can't go back and do it otherwise you're going to wind up with of drawers that don't fit exactly right things just don't line up quite right so forth and so on so in all honesty you can't make a mistake on this but to us it seems like you can so as you can see I've drawn little arrows just so I can make sure I continue along the path of the way I want to cut it out So the next step, once you have the drawers cut out, is to cut the front and the back off. Um, here I'm cutting the back off of one of the drawers, then I'll flip it around and cut the front off, then I'll do the same for the other drawer, and Kat will do the same for hers. So here I'm just drawing out where I want to cut to cut the inside of the drawer out. And this is the only waste piece from after your initial cut where you cut the shape of the box out that you're going to have. I mean you can use this for other things but it's really just a waste piece. But just take your time and think about how you want to place your drawer and or your drawer opening I should say. and just make sure it all works and it's aesthetically pleasing to you and then cut it out. And I'm just doing a dry fit to see how it all goes together and looks. And that looks pretty good to me. So now we're going to cut out drawer pulls. Kat is using a piece of cocobola or co cocobolo to make little knobs and I'm using a piece of zebra wood to make little pulls. And as you can see I'm just using a pencil to help stable the piece. And now we're going to start gluing everything together. Um, we did sand the inside of the drawers before we did this part but Basically, you just glue the fronts and backs on the drawers, and then you put some glue in your opening cut where you came into the bot into the block to cut the drawers out, and clamp it all together and let it sit overnight again. Okay, so here you see I'm using a little bit of CA glue on the edges. The cat that cat made. Um, the cuts were kind of so we so strange and it was going to be so hard to clamp it that we decided to put wood glue in the center of the joint and then put CA glue on the side on the edges just so we could hold it all together. The CA glue acts as a temporary clamp. All I can say is that at this point is if you're using CA glue to temporarily hold something together like this make sure you have acetone nearby especially if you're going to have your fingers anywhere near the CA glue what? What 
And now it's time to start sanding. Lots and lots and lots of sanding. I didn't speed this one up, folks. This is Cat in real time sanding. This is one of those prime examples of do as I say, not as I do, you know, when you're a parent speaking to their child. Uh, don't make the same mistake we made. Glue the back of your box onto the box before you start sanding the outside of the box. Otherwise, you'll have a lot more sanding to do. By the way, did I mention that there's a lot of sanding to do? You got to get rid of all the bandsaw marks. Finally, here they are, ready to be finished. Sanding is done. But before we can finish, we actually need to put the pulls on. So these are my zebra wood pulls. I'm gonna just glue them on, clamp them on, and I'm gonna let them sit overnight again. And then I can start finishing them. Now we can start finishing them. So I'm going to put lacquer on these, but I'm going to first put about three coats of Danish oil. Just look at that green pop. I mean, that's just gorgeous. And here they all are after about three coats of Danish oil. So after I let the Danish oil dry for at least seven, two hours, now I'm going to start using lacquer and I'm just using the spray can def deft lacquer uh, I'm using a gloss on it and I'm gonna put about th th four coats of lacquer and then I'll sand between the third and fourth coat with 1500 grit or 500 grit and then after the fourth coat after it dries for at least an hour I will go back and sand it with 1500 grit and the finish will be glass smooth So the last thing I'm going to do as far as finishing goes is after about 24 hours, at least 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours after spraying the lacquer on, I am going to flock them. So I have the flock it kit. Um, I have the green, emerald green for my box and the, the cat box that cat made. The butterfly box is going to actually get a purple or a wine color. Um, but I've got the areas taped off, and they actually recommend that you, you put, put your lacquer on before you apply this stuff. And that way the flocking will only stick to wherever you spread the adhesive. But to get clean lines, you can use blue tape and just tape it off. And then you just spread the adhesive. You match the adhesive color to the color of the flock. And you just spread the adhesive wherever you want the flocking material to go. And then you put your flocking material in the little tube and you twist and push on the tube at the same time to basically blow the flocking all over the adhesive. And then after about 24 hours, you can shake it out. And then after about a week, you can take the boxes and turn them upside down and tap on them and knock out any loose flocking. And here they are, all finished and complete, and ready to be wrapped and put under the tree. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> that that's it. Um, bandsaw boxes are very easy. The, the one thing you really need to remember about bandsaw boxes, if you're going to do them, is it is what it is uh that's one that's one thing that's very hard for us as woodworkers to get past is if it's not perfect if it doesn't fall straight on the lines that we draw um 
we tend to either throw it away, do it over, or something along those lines. But and with bandsaw boxes, the only cut that you can actually go back and redo is the first cut where you actually cut out the shape of your box. When you go to cut out the insides for the drawers or when you go to cut out the inside, the, the inside of the drawers, um, what you cut is what you cut. And that's why a lot of people say bandsaw boxes are hard uh, is because it, it, it doesn't fall into that everything's got to be perfect mentality that us as woodworkers tend to develop especially when we get into fine woodworking and, and fine furniture and things of that nature. But in all in all, bandsaw boxes are extremely easy. Now, Alex Snodgrass has a video out on the best setup for bandsaw boxes. And that's basically where you have two separate bandsaws, one for resawing and one for curved cuts for smaller blades. And you set up your guides on the resaw saw for that and then you have the, the Carter Products has this one product called a, I think it's a sta blade stabilizer that's made for quarter inch and smaller blades. Um, that that with that on your bandsaw for the curves that actually allows you to make tighter curves and to make the curves a little more accurately. And yes, that's ideal. <laughs> that is very ideal. But you don't have to have that to to do bandsaw boxes. You just have to have a little bit of patience and just take your time and understand that it's not going to come out exactly perfect that if it when you're cutting out the drawers if the blade moves a little on you or if you turn it just a little too fast or something it is what it is you can't back it up and start over you have to keep you have to make the cut continuous otherwise it's going to be totally screwed up and yeah at that point you might want to throw it away and start over but all in all, bandsaw boxes are very easy to do. Any, anybody who has a bandsaw can do them. Um, obviously, because Kat's never used a bandsaw before, and this was her first time on it. Now, as you saw, you do, do, you do need to make sure you have a big enough bandsaw for what you're wanting to do. <laughs> um, we did not intend to go out and buy a new bandsaw. We had to just for this project because that's just what it was. So, yeah. Um, we, I'm actually working on getting the patterns that we use on our website. Uh, one of them is already up there, it's the butterfly. And hopefully by the time this video comes out, the cat and the yin yang one both will be up there as well. And I'll put links to those down in the description. And yeah, that's about it. Anything else? Cured my issue for Sandy. Yeah. It cured her. It cured her love of Sandy. <laughs> and I, I'm, I probably said this in the video during that part, but I just want to reiterate: I did not speed up that part of the film. That was her actually in real time sanding. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, if this is your first time visiting the channel, please hit that subscribe button and be sure to click that little bell next to it, just so you get notified whenever I come up with a new video. And be sure and like, share, and let's get the let's get MK Designs out there. Let's keep on growing. All right. So until next time, guys. Happy creating.